Hello, visitors of the internet. Today, I am uh, building a pickup truck, or I say, I built the pickup truck, but I lost the audio for one of the clips. Anyway, I, I did go through a lot with this. It's just what I'm trying to say now. You'll see the design is as it is, and it's, it's had a huge number of changes just to get it working. These aren't even the original tail lights. So I'm going to show you what I have of some of the later parts of its creation. As well as me driving it, you'll see it's got these specifications down here. I don't want to reveal too much, which is why I'm on this screen. And hopefully you'll get an idea of just what this is, how it's came to be. Although the challenge I've set myself is to create a vehicle with a 2000 RPM rev limit. This does have that, although it is a vehicle that I think is more usable. It's somewhat economical and usable every day, which is really what I was going for. I wasn't going for an unattainable supercar as some people have tried to do. I tried to maintain that 2000 RPM limit, but also make something that can be used and maybe would be used every day as a farm truck or something. So, yeah, on to the next clips that I have created. So, here we have the pickup truck and it's got the very underpowered V8. But I've had a stupid idea. And also it lost the tail lights and wheels. I'm not sure why. But that's what happened. Anyway, as I say, my stupid idea. Firstly, we should get rid of any fancy suspension, which we don't have. Power steering, what do we need? Hmm. It was worth a check to see if we preferred hydraulic. I'm amazed launch control doesn't reduce it more than that I mean it doesn't even need ESC but I was just driving this and honestly it was held back too much by the transmission it's a bit of a mess really so what do you do eh too many gears in such a tight space really I would rather just sacrifice acceleration to be quite honest now I wouldn't, I've got a single exhaust. I think I've checked all this stuff. I don't think we're going to get masses more power from a dual. But, I was just thinking, how big can I make, say, an inline 4 or an inline 5 in this case? Because I had a huge V8, but I could definitely save money if I had less cylinders. This will work transversely, even though it is a bit on the large side. You'll see there, all-wheel drive length fill is far bigger than I would like but it, it will work as long as I don't put double wishbone in which I believe is bigger I can have a look if double wishbone is somehow smaller and they've changed something yeah too big in real life it might be more compact but not in the world of automation how do the market like that they don't mind I guess it wouldn't the solid axle coil has been used on that Mercedes-Benz X-Class, so you can have it on a pickup truck. And trailing arm even. No, not a trailing arm, a torsion beam. That again, that could also be like a lightweight version, could it? No, torsion beam I'm thinking of. Torsion beam is cheap, light, and it's in a way like solid coil, but a very lightweight version of it. So even though the markets don't like it as much, I think with what I'm going for, I've saved over 100 kilos, remember. So even though I've lost, I don't know, for, not 30, 22-ish horsepower maybe, just a vague guess, it will still work. I'm just worried about the problem I had before, though, where the gears were just too tight and if I can get a five speed it might even be better yeah it's showing better fuel economy even would you believe it I mean they are very close for how they behave actually basically interchangeable 
So what do we have? We have 27.1. Same from a 5 speed. Same miles per gallon from a 4 speed. But at that point I actually start losing acceleration. It's got to be a 5 speed then. Even if the markets don't technically like having a 5 speed. It just makes the most sense of all the transmission options I have available to me. They don't really want that changing. Nope. I didn't think they would want that changing. So manual locker is it, it is. It's all wheel drive as well. It's not four wheel drive. But I'm going transverse with this. So it makes sense. And it also means I can run front wheel drive variants a lot more easily. Being transverse. You just cut off the drive shaft essentially. Now being all wheel drive. I probably don't need the same level of tyre width. Yeah. So 82.3. Remember it's only outputting 110 horsepower. So it'll get by as it is. Now I think we are ready to export this. 109.7 horsepower. We can just let it run first. See how the engine sounds that we have built. Uh, let's see the power curve. So you get to see about 106 of those horsepowers before it just cuts back. I could do that, but as I say, it hurts the lower end. It's the first time, I think, though, in playing automation that the short cast has actually made more power than tubular. I mean, I honestly think that's the first time. I, I could be ju just misremembering it, but I really do think that there's not been a time in this game that I've played where that was not, like, the second worst option. I think if I actually move this down, I can add a logo. Don't want it to be too low, but you know, I just I want to put something on to mark it as saying this company has made it. Because now we're actually proud of it. <laughs> you know, we don't want to we don't make just generic two thousand RPM cars. We make special two thousand RPM cars. Anyway, there it is. I think now I have something I can actually drive with gear ratios that aren't messed up. So let's take it to BeamNG and see how it does. So here I have my truck thing, which I think I'll call the Pink Pig. Oh wait, is that already a... I think Porsche already took that name. Okay, the Pig Brick. <laughs> it's called the Pig Brick. Yes, just coming up with names like that. Here's the lights, as you can see. Are those indicators down there? Let's see if they work. Apparently not. Yeah, apparently my indicators don't work or I'm pressing the wrong keys. But anyway, there's our lights. It is pink this time, not chrome, like it's spawned up before. I'm going to have to do something very quickly though if I go and press start. Disable ESC and then... Oh, oh. Unfortunately, my finger slipped and... No, my finger slipped. Uh, my finger pressed on key and then it slipped on the next one but I was able to recover it quickly enough and too much thinking because I'm going the wrong way. Although, having the off-road tyres and decent enough suspension has helped that this actually does not handle too badly. It actually sounds like a like a automotive pig, for lack of a better term. There we go. I feel this could be quicker than it should be, though. Oh dear, don't want to hit that. It's very big and very blocky, which actually does make it easy to position. 
You'd think it would be difficult because of the size, but it isn't actually difficult to drive because it's just so easy to position where this might be on the road. The issue is the gearing seems so close, and indeed it is, and I think this is only a five-speed transmission, remember? Maybe if I keep it in third gear for more of the time. Only shift down if I really need to. Thing is, you want to keep in the high RPMs, but it's hard to do that. Second gear there. Could probably have kept in third, though, if I'm entirely honest. Going a bit off-roady here. Um... I don't know what's happened. I feel like I might have lost a wheel, or at least bent it up quite badly. I've done a 27, which I believe for what this is isn't too bad. I need to gain control of my vehicle, I really do. Obviously, it's big, it's, it's not that heavy, but it's just big, tall, and not that agile. Come on. Round here we go. Up here. Oh dear, this is a bit sketchy, let's say. Oh, just push that a bit too wide. I think I messed it up, but I've still got a 27 second time. So let's see how that is. So, a 27.4 second time puts this more or less exactly between the Mikami McTrekker and the Hirochi Sunburst Mark 1. It just can't quite match that savage ability to put its power down and, well, the amount of power that the military vehicle had. And it was still a modern vehicle, remember, though. So it's still good enough to be a 1960s kind of sporty saloon. But I'm not disappointed in that because you have to remember, this is not exactly the epitome of refinement, so to speak. It is very, very simple and basic. The chassis weight is apparently 12, 20 kilos. And then uh, obviously when you've loaded everything else in, it's just over 1300 it's a bit on the heavier side a bit on the porkier side and you have to remember this is 110 horsepower which you won't even see because as well it's uh, going to neutral ah just actually we've closer to 2000 here when it did an automation but you're only making about 110 horsepower anyway while the Sunburst had about 70, but it was significantly, significantly lighter, so beating that, I would say, is quite impressive for what this is. I mean, you see the front wheel, by some miracle, stayed on. I'm not sure how that's even possible, but it did. I guess because the tyres are so big. But yeah, it is damaged now for cornering. And the gearing's tight. I guess that's because it's for normal usage and not so much for racing. And now my television's gone on a timeout timer to turn itself off. But anyway, with all being said and done, it's actually surprisingly good off road. But with all being said and done, I'm going to <laughs> leave it here and say goodbye until another day.